He has wiped out by his grace through faith in Christ your every sin, every sin, past, present, future. Christian hedonist is somebody who says that my greatest joy, my greatest good is God. And therefore, I will pursue that joy and I will pursue that God above all else. So God's glorified and I'm satisfied. You are now listening to the Pastor Discussions Podcast. What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode number 22 of the Pastor Discussions Podcast. I'm John. And I'm Joe, and this is your weekly conversation on doctrine, faith, and the Christian life. And we are faking it till we make it today, because Joe is not feeling hot. Although I just um, took care of something, so, <laughs> so I feel a little better now. So it, it lasts about 20 minutes. And then Let's get, so this is going to be a shorter podcast, because <laughs> we are on a timeline of Joe's digestive system. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, Hey, this episode is sponsored by the resurrection coffee company. I've got a question for you. Like you're the coffee connoisseur in this duo. What is like, they've got this coffee called Elston Avenue and it's said it's an Ethiopian coffee and it says peach, black tea, Jasmine. What in the world does that mean? Uh, those don't sound like good flavors. I know. Me. That's the thing. Like, I don't know. I was surprised with the Belmont underpass. Those aren't, I don't normally like, um, those flavors either, but it makes a really nice t- flavor. So is this one of theirs? Yeah, this is one of theirs. It's, it's a new one that they've got. And, uh, they, uh, Dave called it liquid gold. So apparently I, it's good. I'd I just, try it if I were you. I just, I just, I'm not a tea fan. It won't be like tea, though. Okay. It's See, coffee, right? Yeah, it's, co- it's coffee. Yeah, it's yeah. Ethiopian coffee. Yeah, it, it won't be like tea. See, I don't. I know nothing about this. See, so what we think of tea is not actually what tea is like. Oh, really? Yeah, we Americanize. It's it's like it's like this coffee versus Folgers coffee. Oh, okay. So American tea versus like British tea or how tea is actually supposed to be oh, okay. brewed and, and drank is very different. Cause so, I think you would actually like... Uh, like British tea, like real tea, yeah, like Earl Grey tea, yeah, something that's real because it's it's much bolder and more bitter, and you put the right things in it, and then it brings out the the flavors. Yeah, so, I think you, I think you would actually, I think if you didn't drink American tea, I think you'd actually like it. Here's my cumulative exposure of tea. We lived in Missouri, and you put a bunch of tea bags in yeah, some hot water. Yeah. <laughs> And it's like the Lipton stuff. Yeah. And then you dump a metric ton of sugar in it. Okay. And so, see, it's, like, <laughs> it's like watered down sugar water. Yeah, I don't, if I terrible. could even, terrible. I don't even know what that would be, but yeah. if I were to imagine what watered down sugar water would be, it would be that it kind would be of tea. That, yeah. No, you need to actually, uh, you don't know what real tea is then. So. Okay. Well, I didn't know what real coffee was until I met with Dave and he gave me this stuff. So, <laughs> and I've been drinking it like a You have, camel. you have like a. I got, How many pots did you go through a day? Just one. Just one. Just one. One whole pot. One for John. whole pot a day, which is different <laughs> from never drinking coffee before. Well, and you already have the tiniest bladder ever, so that's as it is. that's true. So another reason this is going to be a short podcast <laughs> is because I'm a half cup in. So anyway, uh, today we are talking about devotions, meaningful devotions. Uh, so yeah, we haven't really planned this out. So let's just see where this goes. What do you, so what, we never plan anything we out don't anymore. We just, anymore. We pick a topic and we talk about Go it. Go for it. Uh, so what do you do for, what do you do for devotions? What are devotions? Like, what, are, is it different than Bible study? I think so. Okay. Like Bible study, you're, you're specifically, I think looking for, at least when I think about studying, um, I'm studying a specific thing. Okay. Or I'm trying to actually dig deep and go where devotions are more of a, not that you don't do that in devotions, but it's, it's a, it's a, I think it more of it as a topical reading. Okay. Um, so you, like just broader. Yeah. More broad. You're looking for the things that stand out to you. Okay. Versus you're digging for something, trying to find something. Right. Um, like those are the two. Uh, so I sort of like, I sort of think about it like a big picture, little picture. Yeah. Like that's yeah. sort of how I work through it. So if I'm. So, so really focused versus bro. Yeah. For, versus yeah. like a, so you have a very narrow view or a really wide view. Yeah. Devotions are big wide, things versus wide view. looking at uh smaller, yeah. looking for smaller things. Yeah. Yeah. So that's sort of, okay. So we're on the same page with that. So study doesn't happen for me every day. 
um, I try to get devotions in every day. So it's, you're reading something and mo- should be scripture. Um, I think there's some, there's some good like devotion helps. Yeah. Good helps that do that. But I think not they still need to be tied to scripture. Our daily bread. No, not our daily bread and not Jesus calling. <laughs> so, sorry. Well, Jesus calling doesn't yet. Yeah, no, you, my blood are, pressure is raising right now. <laughs> you said Jesus calling. Oh man. Okay. So, um, so give me an example of what that looks like for you. Normally it looks like for me, like I, I will, uh, I have a saw, um, you gave, well, John gives me lots of books. I like so, giving books yeah, away. It's like his, it's his thing. That's so my spiritual gift. You gave me a, a Psalter, um, devotion, a devotional mm-hmm. Psalter. Mm-hmm. That's been really helpful. So I read that every night. I'll read the Psalm and then the devotion that goes with it. Gotcha. Um, so that's been extremely helpful. So that's my thing that's consistent. And then, Probably three to five times a week I'll do, um, uh, I'll just be reading through scripture. Yeah. But that normally starts with, I start with, uh, I mean, I think devotions have to start, meaningful devotions have to start with prayer. Right. And preparation. So what I do to, I, I, I'll sit down normally when I get to the office, uh, around eight, I'll sit down and I'll, I'll take some, I'll spend some time in prayer, um, for different things. And then, uh, as I'm finishing, um, just some simple requests, help me see something new in your word this morning. Uh, and then I'll normally go to, um, I'll start in the Valley of Vision book that I have. Mm-hmm. I'll read one of those and then I'll jump into what I'm, where I'm studying. Yeah. And right now, like, um, we've been going through the book of Mark with our girls. So I've been doing my devotions there and just okay. reading. Oh, we did, we did eight verses on uh, Monday and Tuesday, and then we did another seven verses on Wednesday and Thursday. And then I'll have to ask Michaela what she picked out for them today, but I haven't read that today, but I'll, I'll read that and I'll, I'll think about it and I'll read it again and think about it and then uh, pray at the end and maybe try to come away with some observations from the text. Um, and then, um, uh, and it's not like this read, okay, stop and formal thing, but it's, just, as it's like, a, a, like very much how you think of, I think of it as meditation. I'm just thinking through it and saying, okay, it's think of it. And I'm, I get it. Maybe I'm eccentric, but I think of it as like a conversation uh-huh. with God where it's like, okay, so here's this phrase here. What's that tie into? Um, and I'm structured. So maybe mine's more formal than it, it needs to be in more narrow but i i feel like i'm broad when i do that so i i'm really simple mm-hmm. uh i do have a process that i work through of prayer and then i've got this thing that just focuses my thoughts and calms things down for me before i i go into the actual reading of god's word and then um there's just meditation and thought and prayer and i don't take big chunks either yeah. normally um sometimes i'll read enough to get the context but i'll I'll normally just read, you know, like I said, seven to 10 verses Mm -hmm. and try to um, see what's there. Man, we could not be more different in how we do this. (laughs) This is going to be interesting because I don't think we've ever talked about this before. I don't think we, I don't think we have. Um, So I like the, the commonality is prayer. I think prayer is necessary. uh, But um, my process of doing devotions is very, very different. So there, I I look at it and there's sort of like two resources for devotions. There's those like pre-written devotions, Mm -hmm. like, uh, my utmost for his highest or, uh, morning and evenings with Charles Spurgeon or, uh, uh, John Piper has an app, uh, that's called, uh, something joys. New Morning Mercies by Trip. New Morning really Mercies good. by Trip. We've been using that with the girls. Yeah. Um, and uh, what is Piper's thing? We might have to pause this because it's, I've got the app on my phone. Hang on. Joy. Solid Joys. There it is. Solid Joys. It's an app on my phone uh, that Desire God puts out. And so like for, for that, all it is, is um, it's just basically a, a, a text or a, a verse and then a meditation on that, that verse. And that's how I start. Like that's my, that's my morning devotion is, mm. is just something simple like that. Or we'll go through with the girls, we'll go through new morning mercies by trip 
and uh, it, it's more for Carly and I, but they sit in on it and then we sort of bring it down to their level and talk to them about it. Uh, so that's my morning devotions are just basically taking something that somebody else has written that has a, a text and then a meditation on that text. And, and because in the morning, like my brain is not functioning well, it takes me a while to, to get going. So my, the second part of that is evenings. I'll typically spend time before I go to bed reading and before I read anything else, I will read through the Bible and the way that I do that is where our big difference is because I take large chunks. Like I'll, I'll work through a, uh, a chapter or two in the uh, old Testament. Like right now we're in Genesis. So I've been reading, uh, I finished up with Genesis. I'm moving on to Exodus and I'll read uh, a Psalm. I'll read a proverb and then I'll read something from the new Testament. And uh, so it's basically about four, four to five chapters uh, in the evening. I, I remove myself from distractions. I pray I read it and I'm not concerned with like picking up on, on things. I'm asking myself, like, what's the big picture here? Like, how does this fit in? What's the one big idea that this is trying to communicate? Uh, and sometimes it ends up being just something simple about, uh, you know, I'll read a Psalm and it'll be talking about God's mercy and, and it just caused me to reflect on God's mercy. Or sometimes it'll be like with, uh, with Exodus right now, they're, they're in the plagues and just the surpassing power of God in his ability to do that. Uh, something, just something big like that. And, uh, and then I just sort of think about that and marinate on that and pray through that. And, uh, and, and that's kind of it. I think just, there's a large difference between like the personality difference and just who we are really yeah. shows in that. Yeah. Like when I do that, I, I don't get anything out of it. Like I, I can, I'll read larger chunks and, and sometimes get those things, but, if I'm if I'm spending committed time um, trying to see more of who God is mm-hmm. through His Word, I need to take I've I've I just know myself that I I've because I've tried different things. I need to take smaller chunks. I need to stay focused, and I don't need to dig in, but I just need to think through what I'm reading. Where if if I go real broad, I'll just miss a lot. Yeah, and maybe maybe I'm. Maybe I'm too constricted in that because I I just don't want to miss stuff. <laughs> maybe, well, that, that's, maybe that's that's part of it. That's, with, par- with that's my probably brain. part of it because I'm okay with missing stuff yeah. in, in my devotion time. Like I'm okay with, and it, it's hard for me because I'm like I like to burrow down into it. But I like I recognize that about myself, and I've had to force myself out of that so that I can get through larger chunks of the Bible. Because otherwise, I mean, I could probably go forty years and not yeah. have read the whole counsel of God's word. And I'm not a fan of, I'm not a fan of read through the Bible in a year plans or anything like that. Like I'm looking, I'm not aiming at just hitting a certain mark on the wall. I'm aiming at seeing the, the, the beauty of Christ and the, the glory of God in the whole of the Bible. And to do that, I've just, my approach has been to just take chunks from different sections of the Bible to make sure that I'm naturally not going to read, um, the second half of Daniel. Like that's, that's, if I had my druthers, like if I was just, if it was just up to my whims, I wouldn't do that. And so I need a, a certain degree of structure to why. force my hand. <laughs> what? I don't understand why. <laughs> like, so anyway, it, it, it yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Like it's harder to, to get through the whole council of God. If you do smaller chunks, I, I would agree with that. Um, and I think there is, there probably is time for large reading, but that's not what I would do with my devotion time, I guess. Here's the other thing that's helped with, with devotion time for me in that, the evening part is I got a, a reader's Bible, mm. an ESV readers, readers Bible. It does not have verse delineations. It does not have footnotes. It does not have cross references. No distractions. No distractions. All yeah. it is is chapter, you know, you know, Exodus chapter four and the chapter. And so that eliminates a lot of those distractions where I tend to be like, Oh, I wonder what the cross reference for this is. Or I see a little number up there, a letter. And I'm like, I need to check that out. So that's been really helpful for me in, uh, I think you're naturally an engaged reader too. I'm naturally not. 
That's true. I become really disengaged when I'm reading and sometimes can read thoughtlessly. Mm -hmm. So when I read long sections, I have to be extremely disciplined. Um, so just for, for the sake of a, of a meaningful, having a meaningful time, like I still practice large reading and still will read large chunks, but that time, uh, that I spend that's, that's set apart for that. Yeah. I've decided not to do that because I know some of my tendencies. Yeah. Um, so, I th- so some I think, of this comes back to just knowing yourself. And, I think and so. Like, like, there's no one way to do this. Right. It's he, not like Jesus sat down and said, you know, here's how you, he sat down and told us how to pray. He didn't sit, sit down and tell us how to do devotions. That's true. And sometimes, sometimes people have formulas for doing things and doing them well. And like, we've talked about this a lot with parenting. Yeah. You don't parent all your kids the same way. There's no exactly. formula for that. Um, You don't, your kids don't all learn the same way. They don't get they don't work through things the same way. We don't do that either. Yeah. So part of having a meaningful devotion is knowing what's going to be effective for me to learn. Yeah. What's going to be helpful and not, not necessarily efficient, but um, maybe it just effective is a, is a good way. Like, so know yourself, like you, you, like you said, you can get bogged down and get into a rabbit hole, right. Yeah. And go down. Yeah. So you, you just, you're going to choose to read larger chunks and stay out of the details and go to the big idea. So I used to read uh, devotions from a Thompson chain reference Bible. Oh, that was a, that was a train wreck. <laughs> Cause it's like, you see this thing and it's like, Hey, the next time this shows up is here. I'm like, Oh, I want to see where that shows up. next. I go, oh, I want to see where that. And then, next thing you know, I'm, I'm starting in like Genesis and I end <laughs> up in like, you know, first Peter. And I'm yeah. like, how the heck did I get all the way over here? This didn't help <laughs> at all. Um, so that that's like a great tool for studying, but when it comes to just, and so like, okay, what's the aim of devotions then? Cause here's the thing, like when we were just talking about that, I was thinking like, okay, Christ didn't tell us how to do devotions. He didn't tell us to do devotions. Right. So like, what's the value in it? Why do it? Well, it, it grows our, I mean, it's going to grow our, uh, not grow our knowledge of God. It, it's going to grow our relationship with God. So how do we, how do we get to know God more yeah. is through his word. And so if I'm not going to spend time there and if I'm not going to just look for the truths and look like I'm looking for him mm-hmm. in the text, I'm not looking for these pieces of knowledge. Like little right? nuggets. Yeah. We're not looking for that. <laughs> we're, we're looking for him. Yeah. So I, I, what's the value in it? How can I know God without, spending time with him and his word and looking for him. Yeah. And then, I mean, we've talked about this ton, but it glorifies God that I, that I would search for him Mm -hmm. and that glorification of him brings me joy. So my satisfaction in, in this life and in the life to come is going to be in knowing him. Yeah. So why would I not pursue more of a relationship with him? And I have to be, have to look at his word to do that. So, I mean, ultimately this comes to why do it? Because I want to do it. Yeah. I want to know who he is. I, I want to have a deeper relationship with him. Yeah. Um, that, that, that's what it comes down to for me. Yeah. It's like the, I, I really struggled with devotions, uh, for a long time because it was like a, a dutiful thing, mm-hmm. you know, it was like, uh, well, I, I guess I need to be a good Christian. This is what, this is what good Christians do. And, uh, one of the things that I discovered in that is, that I would open the book and I would read, but my heart wasn't engaged. You know, I, w- I was just doing a, a, an external thing because as, as if God's sitting up there and being like, oh, cool. He checked that box. Good job. <laughs> you know? And so what, what, what really shifted for me was when I discovered that the whole Bible is really about God and it's, it's like, it's like laying out a feast for our enjoyment. When we open the Bible, there's just so many things about God that we, we see and the Holy spirit applies in our hearts and we rejoice over and delight in, and we, it, it produces greater confidence and greater faith and greater uh, trust. And in, in, in a lot of cases, there will be sometimes when I'm reading and I'm maybe going through a specific situation where I'm, I'm struggling and, and the, the text has nothing to do with it, but seeing something in the text about God's faithfulness or about God's 
mercy or his care for his children or his provision or something like that just strengthens my joy and my faith in such a way that I'm able to uh, have a greater peace in walking through that difficulty or whatever. You know what I mean? So like it, it, it changes the way I interpret the world. I think the way in which we approach doing this is, which is kind of tying to what you're saying is really important. Do we approach it with an attitude of humility and dependence Mm -hmm. or is it more, I need to do this because it's what I'm supposed to do so I can know more stuff. Yeah. Like that's where the disengagement comes. And sometimes, um, and I think there's a difference between disengagement versus like, as you were talking through that, like when I do broad reading, sometimes my mind will wander and Mm -hmm. be disengaged. Um, I think there's a difference between that and knowing how to read, but I, this is uh, that coming to the like, okay, I'm going to depend on you, God, yeah, to help me see this because because I need you. And then the the amazing, the, I I just think one of the amazing things and the things that the thing that feeds this is there's when we come to it with an attitude of humility and dependence, our joy increases, yeah, as we work through things. And cause, cause stuff like, just like you were talking about where you're walking through something in life that has maybe nothing to do with the text, but you see that truth yeah, because the truth is there. And that's, work. that's, that change. Sorry. Like that. I just want, I don't want to lose this because this might be helpful to somebody that that's one of the things that shifted. Like I used to look at the Bible as like this roadmap to life type of thing. Like, okay, well I've got this problem. I got to find what the Bible has to say about it and then just do that. Yeah. Right. That, that like, there's, there's like an element of truth that like the Bible does speak about different things. Like there are imperatives. There are things that we need to do and respond to in faith. But, but the, what I was missing in that was, uh, seeing God in the midst of that. And, and I had made it about me rather than saying all scripture is profitable. Right. All scripture is is inspired and breathed out by God and all scripture is revealing something about God. And so, so my, my focus shifted from instead of like, I'm going to try to use this as use the Bible as a band aid to, to fix my, to problems. fix my problem. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to look at it as uh, the doctor that gives the diagnosis and the cure. Well, and it's amazing that like when we do approach it that way, all, and you, like you just talked about, all of scripture is profitable. All of it, like how, as reformed guys, how how silly is it to approach God's word saying, well, I need to find this, this, this. Yeah. Instead of saying, okay, I've been working through this and these things are happening in my, my life. I'm not going to like move out of this and go try to find all the things I need to do to work this out. Right. Like, Trusting that God has yeah. something for you in the text. So that, you're reading. that that approach that you take when you come to God's word is, is it I'm here so I can figure something out or is it I'm here so that God can show me something. Yeah. And, and reveal himself. Like yeah. that's the, that's the interesting thing is uh, there are all sorts of moral lessons uh, in the Bible. Right. And when, when I would read devotions trying to just identify moral lessons I left more discouraged than anything because I, it just kind of pointed out how immoral I am at different times. You know, well, we had in Missouri, we had some, some godly men that really helped me see that these moral truths of the Bible are pointing to the moral purity of God, which is a reminder of my impurity, but points me to Christ's purity on my behalf in which I yeah. is the only thing that I have hope. Our deficiencies should always point us to Christ. Exactly. And that's where we get, that's where we get so messed up as people is what all these failures, all these shortcomings, mm-hmm. who do they, who do we tend to look to? We look to ourselves and yeah. then we try to, and then we, we try to fix that. Well, we bring that same mentality into, we can at times devo- like devotion reading. Yeah. And quiet times. So, so in my devotion time, like one of the, one of the advantages, I'm not trying to sell this, but one of the advantages of that I've found in doing it this way is it's allowed me to get a gospel picture in my daily readings. So 
Old Testament is filled with failure and rebellion and running away and God's pursuit of his people. And, and especially if you read the Bible from, from Genesis on, you start seeing like, oh, maybe this could be the one that's promised. Maybe this could be the one that maybe this guy's the guy. And, and it's just not, 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 not. And then you got, you've got in the Psalms, you've got uh, like the full range of human emotions going on and God's faithfulness and David's pleas and his triumphs and his failures and, and all of these other elements. And then you've got in the Proverbs, you've got the wisdom of God uh, sort of just personified in the most wise person that has ever lived. And, and yet even in his wisdom, he's failing to be fully wise and ultimately, when you come to the New Testament, all of these things coalesce and culminate in Jesus Christ. So all of the failures are made up for by Christ. All of the uh, faithfulness of God is made manifest in Christ. All of the wisdom of God is shown to us in Christ. And and he accomplishes all of this on our behalf. So so, Wait, so, so you and I are both big on biblical theology. Yeah. I mean, we, we both agree on that. Now, so let's talk a little bit. Um, what are What are some of the the keys to studying um, the way that you do like, cause, cause I, I'll read big chunks at a time, mm-hmm. but I, w- I don't use that for that, that specific time that I would call a devotion that yeah. that's, I don't keep it in that there. Those are different things for me. Um, so what are some, so what are some keys you think to staying on track doing it the way you're doing it for a devotion? Um, like what are some, some, some main, so somebody's going to try to do one that way, right? do a devotion and do big chunks of scripture. Mm-hmm. What are, what are a couple things that they have to keep in mind as they're doing that to keep them on track? Okay. So like the first thing we've already mentioned that the Bible is all about God. So I'm going to take that one for granted. Uh, the, the first thing I would say is recognize that the Bible is a story. It's a redemptive story. It starts with failure in the garden and ends with a new Eden where everything is restored and better than it was in the garden. So Genesis, Revelation, the two bookends, and everything in the middle is moving from this beginning to this end. And so it's helpful for me, at least, in thinking through, okay, how does Genesis fit into this storyline? How does uh, how does uh, Joshua fit into this storyline? You know, what 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 is going on? What has happened that uh, how has God moved in the past? And so for me, working through chapter two at a time helps me to move along that storyline um, and and see God's redemptive historical purposes in in just even like, I mean, reading through Genesis, gee, you get we're, we're looking in uh, we're looking at Joseph now in Sunday mornings. And Joseph is like the culmination of incredible failures by the patriarchs. And yet God continues to be faithful because he made promises, you know? And so anyway, so I think that that would be one. And so like when I get to, to the Psalms, uh, the Psalms fit within that redemptive historical framework. In other words, they they were written at a certain point during a specific time, but the Psalms seem to transcend that, you know, the Psalms seem to, uh, their worship, you know, so, so seeing God's redemptive plan unfold kind of leads to, to this place where I, I like to, to just look at the Psalms and just pause and just worship, you know? So, and then, um, and then obviously in the new Testament, it all culminates with Christ and is looking back to Christ. Uh, so having that understanding of the, the Bible's a story, it's telling one big massive story about God's redemption of his people. Uh, that's been really helpful for me. Uh, the second thing I would say is uh, I, I typically ask two questions as I'm reading through these big chunks. Like, what is this saying about God and how is this pointing me forward to Christ? How is this propelling me forward to Jesus? Uh, so it might be uh, where it, it might be really hard to maybe figure out what this is saying about God because it's all about the rebellion of of Israel. Uh and and then there are other times when 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 you have that perspective, it becomes very easy. So, for example, uh, the the people rebel against God and make the golden calf, and Moses goes up to intercede for them and says, uh, "Strike me down, but save your people." 
right? Was, so I'm looking at that and I'm saying, okay, wow, that's, that's saying a lot about God. He's, he's holy and righteous and just. And at the same time, there's a mediator between the people and God. And, and Moses is prefiguring Jesus Christ, who ultimately does lay down his life and get slain on behalf of his people in order to appease the wrath of God so that they might live. And so those two questions are huge for me in working through these things, thinking through like, what is this saying about God? And how is this pointing me forward to Christ? Um, so those would be maybe two things that, that I would say, um, and like I said, this, it works for me, but it might right. not work for everybody. I think it's a, like, we ask the same questions. Like, I think we, we do things different. And then I, like, there's some cautions that I have to have. Okay. I can't be narrow minded. Mm-hmm. I can't just look at this and divorce it from its context. Cause I'm looking at a, a much smaller uh, piece of scripture. I have to remember that there, that this is part of uh, a bigger story. Mm-hmm. And it's pointing me to Christ. So we've got the same goals. Um, the pit, the pitfalls of being so narrow. I, I do. I almost want to ask you a question. Like, so, so you study that way, and I see that you you look at things that way. When we have lots of conversations, we don't preach that way. Mm-mm. So I just I find it I find it interesting that because that that still is our focus in our preaching, but we preach it in much smaller pieces. Yeah, we do of uh, scripture. So my study time is much like um, how we preach Mm -hmm. here. Yeah. uh, Where, which is, that's okay. Which is, which But again, you're saying study, not devotion. You see what I'm saying? Right. You're picking like, I've picked up on that. Like you said, study, study, study. So my question is, are you viewing your devotion time as study time? I don't, I guess I don't do that in my mind, but maybe there's not a difference between the two. So uh, I just, I wanted that. I want that what that I call it a quiet time. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted that quiet time to be where I wouldn't be distracted. And yeah. I wouldn't get off sidetrack. So maybe there's a, there's a, a discipline issue with me as far as focus. But so to do that, I, I took smaller chunks where I could read and right. stop and think, read and stop and think versus trying to get larger chunks. Yeah. And I just, I find it, I guess I find it interesting that you want to read larger chunks, but yet are unwilling to maybe do that so much from a right. pulpit standpoint. And one of the things that we're we're doing with Sunday school is we're going to start taking larger chunks yeah. and working through some of that. So like the the two complement one another. Um, and yeah, because like, you don't you don't have to lose the the biblical theology and the right. overlook by taking smaller chunks. That's yeah, that's like the big thing I think. Yeah, because that's what we do got in a, preaching. Right, you still have to stay tied to the overall what's what's the overall overarching text? Like we've been working through Romans. You can't isolate Romans chapter five or Romans chapter six or Romans chapter four from one, two and three. Right. And you You can't, can't, you can't isolate Romans chapter four, for example, from Genesis. Right. Because he's talking about Abraham. So there's, there's that, there's that big picture that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So in the same way that I would say that um, my devotions are, are similar to, they don't go in depth the way our, uh, uh, sermons do, but I, I approach them that very similar yeah. where I'm going to take a small chunk. I'm not going to lose the big picture, yeah. but I'm going to focus on, on this little piece right here maybe, and then see how that points me out to the big picture. Maybe this is something that would be helpful to people. Like if you think of, if you think of meaningful devotions, uh, meaningful devotions are not, uh, simply focused on duty. Meaningful devotions are not simply focused on, getting information, right. meaningful devotions are worship. Right. And they're focused on growing your relationship. Yeah. So if, if that means that you need to take smaller chunks or medium chunks or big chunks, whatever it needs to be where it's not, it, it, is it wrong to say it shouldn't be like work? I don't know because sometimes like, it is. I, I've Maybe this is my experience. Devotions have never been I've never experienced that work studying to me can be work but but coming coming to God's word and just sitting down and reading I've yeah. never experienced like the you know maybe not work but there have been like forcing myself to do it yes like there have been times when I haven't felt like it and in that sense it's not kind of like not work. not 
not the force. I was thinking more like, is it is it laborious? Is it, oh, is oh, it, oh, no, no, no. Yeah, okay, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I, was I, thinking, I was thinking like there are times when I don't want to do it. And right, right. That's that's not what I was talking about. I was talking more. It should never. If you're coming to it and you're you're working through it hard, trying to think through yeah, everything, yeah, yeah. And try to figure. Okay, I've got to pull this out. I've got to yeah. find this piece of truth so I can feel like I did something. Right. That's I don't. That that you've got the wrong approach. Yeah, when you come to it, I kind of like like reading a novel. Yeah, like if you read a novel, you're not sitting there picking apart every single thing. Right, you're you're they reading, stand out to you. Naturally. Yeah, they do, right. and you're looking for the story. Yeah, and here's the thing: if you take a bigger picture, what I've found is the connections become a lot clearer. As you read larger chunks, you start to see threads that run throughout the whole Bible. Whereas if I was slowing down and going really slow, I'd miss those threads. Mm. So that's one of the reasons that I do larger chunks for for uh, my devotion time. So let's let's sort of wrap it up with some like practical things that might be helpful to people. So I've thought a couple. Number one, we we talked about praying. Like you need to be in prayer as you're doing this. Number two, find a place that's comfortable, but not too comfortable because you yeah. fall asleep. Um, so I, I I don't know about you. Consistency is really important like a, a specific time mm-hmm. or, and you're talking about a place, like a place can be a consistency thing. That's too. my consistency. Yeah, like my it, consistency is, is a place. Yeah. Like, so like, I don't necessarily do it at the same time. Um, but I have a specific place where there is, it's free of distraction. It's quiet. It's comfortable. I, and, and so like in, in conjunction with that, like I also, I also journal, Mm-hmm. with my devotion. So I'll write little notes down in the margin of my Bible or I'll, uh, or I'll write in a notebook as I'm reading and I see something really cool. I'll just put the verse number and what I saw. And then at the end, I'll go back and sort of expand on those a little bit and like what it was that I saw there. Um, so journaling has been really helpful for taking the, the thing that I'm seeing and writing it down to solidify it in my brain. Um, and and then sort of like sort of end it with like reflections on what that's showing me about God and, and how my response is. Um, so that's been, that's been really helpful for having meaningful devotions for me as well. Um, I do, I journaled as well. And I always at the do similar things, but not, that sounds very messy to me as you, <laughs> as you're explaining it. Cause you write something down and then you, you skip down, but then you're going to come back and fill all that stuff in. It could just, so mine is like all part of the reason I stop and pause is to write maybe some of those things down. Part of the back. reason you say that. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> also I'll be on YouTube and start a little interlude for myself. So, <laughs> uh, so as you, as, well, let's see, you all, you maybe forget. What Part I was of the reason about. you were my way of doing. Oh, the devotion is messy, right? I was just going to say I uh, I write a prayer at the end of my devotion as I close. Um, so it's not just something that I'm I'm praying in my mind, but I, I put put it to mm-hmm. to pen, and then I can come back and read it again as um, at a later date. So yeah. I've got. I started doing this a couple of years ago. So I've got three books now that are, or I'm on my third book that's almost full. So yeah, it's kind of, it'll probably be cool to go back and yeah, that'd those. be cool to go back and see how, so. how it's changed. Last suggestion, talk with other people about what you're, what you're saying in your devotions, whether it's your spouse or your kids, like you can take these things that you're seeing and, and share them with your kids in ways that they can comprehend or that, that are age appropriate for them as far as their level of comprehension, uh, talk about them with your, with your spouse. Like, you know, Hey, I was reading today and I saw this. I just thought that was really neat. I mean, it could be as simple as that. Yeah. Uh, or with your friends. Um, I know a lot of times, uh, like if our families get together to eat, we'll just end up talking about what it is where we we've been reading through. And so, um, yeah, so that's, that's a, that's another part too, that I think is helpful because your devotions then are not only blessing you, but blessing other people. There's an accountability aspect to that as well. That, yeah. that if you're, especially if it's a spouse or somebody close to you is expecting like something that you get used to. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, uh, what did you read today? Oh, I, I didn't read today. Failure. Yeah. <laughs> so it, you're not, a bad Christian. No, not that, it, but it can be a good reminder. <laughs> it can be a good reminder for us that uh, sometimes we get too busy. Yeah. And we need, we, we don't need to, I mean, we need to make time for that, but. 
I think those things remind us that we want to make time for that too. Yeah. So, yeah. And then, uh, lastly, uh, I would say last suggestion I'd have for meaningful devotions is make your aim with devotions always to see more of God and have your joy increase in God. Uh, I think that's so key for a lot of people. Um, where maybe you're in a rut or maybe you're doing it and you don't feel like it, or maybe that for me, that was just really transformational. Like if I see this as my greatest joy is found in God and this book reveals who God is. And so I'm going to open this book to see more of God in order that my joy will increase. That's huge. I've always, the thing that's the thought I've always come with it. So the, my suggestion, remember that you are approaching him, that to know God more, not to know more about God. Yeah. You're there to increase in a relationship. You're building a relationship just like you would with any other person you care about. Yep. So if Christ has changed you, if your identity is in him and you're a new creation and, and you're his child, you value him. Yep. And how do you get to know him more? You, you spend time with him just like any, any other relationship that we would have. It, It takes time. It takes effort. Um, but we do those things because we want to, not because we have to. Exactly. So understand that. Do you want to maybe ask yourself the question, do I want to do this or do I have to do this? Mm-hmm. And then when if we, you ha- if, if you answer, you have to do that, you probably need to repent. Yeah, I, I would agree. You need to go back to sometimes the it can, sometimes it can feel like we right. have to do I, it. I'm saying like, if it fundamentally, like I have to do this, like you need to repent and go back to the gospel right. because that's, that's telling something right there. Sometimes I can tell us where our heart's at at the moment though, too. But if, uh, if, to that point though, you still need to. Like, right, I, 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 I agree. We do need to repent. But, so, but if we start with that and we, cause we can get it in a rut I, or at least I can get in a rut of just doing it yeah. because it's something I, I'm supposed to do. Right. It becomes routine. Right. Yeah. So make sure you're, you're, you're not just stuck in a rut yeah. and you realize that, because that's when you can get to the danger of, I just need to continue to yeah. to increase my knowledge of yeah. God versus, no, you want to increase your relationship with him. Because that's where that joy piece that you're yeah. connecting is found is in our joy increases as we get to know our God more. Speaking of joy, next episode is entitled Christian Hedonism. <laughs> So John's been waiting for 22 episodes. I have been waiting for 22 (laughs) episodes to talk about Christian hedonism. So next week we're going to talk about Christian hedonism. And so like if what we're talking about now seems a little bit foreign to you, uh, the whole joy piece and, and stuff like that tune back in next week, because hopefully we'll try to explain it and help you see where we're coming from on that. (laughs) I'm sure we will (laughs) in in our own way, in our own discombobulated (laughs) way. So, Anyway, any other words on devotions? No, I think we've worked through it. Beat that horse. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I would just encourage people, just some, like, these means of grace that God's given us can sometimes feel, uh, when we get started, like, if, okay, so I was talking about that laborious versus work. Sometimes it can, just to get started, but if we approach with that humility and that, that attitude of God, I, I want to know you more. As soon as we open his word, the spirit's working. Yeah. It, it becomes, it becomes joyful and yeah. glorious. So I would just encourage you, anyone, if they're having trouble starting. Yeah. Um, ask for grace. Ask for grace. Yeah. Ask for, for God's strength and, and start. And I think if you do that and you come with the right attitude um, and ask for that right attitude, you're going to be amazed at what happens. Yep. So. Agreed. Sweet. Episode 22 in the books. <laughs> Woo. I didn't have to go to the restroom either. You know what? That was 45 minutes long. <laughs> that was a short episode. This is what happens when we start talking. It just sort of takes on a life of its own. Anyway, well, thanks for joining us for this episode of the Pastor Discussions podcast. And you can check us out on social media at uh, on our pastordiscussions.com. Um, yeah. You do that. You do this stuff. I'm really bad at it. <laughs> yeah, you can find us online at pastordiscussions.com. You can email us at pastordiscussions at gmail.com. You can also uh, check us out on Facebook. We've got a group. If you want to write for us, you can find that on the website. We'd love to publish your articles. We've got another one coming out by Chris Hughes here shortly. And 
I think that's it. All right. We'll come back next week and we will be talking about Christian hedonism on your next conversation on doctrine, faith and the Christian life. Sick to your stomach type thing. It's like my food won't digest right. Um, so it's it's pretty awesome. Doesn't Michaela have a um have a oil for that? Yeah, probably. I just don't. <laughs> so. so Finley, uh, Carly, Finley said her tummy was hurting or something, and so Carly put uh, some oil on her stomach or something. And so now she'll walk around and she'll be like, I don't feel good. I need oil. That's exactly what happens. Our girls are like oil <laughs> hordes, man. Like, if anything's wrong, if something's a little sore, uh, I need this oil. And they know what oil they need, too. It's, it's really bad. But Carly didn't tell me about this, so I was watching Finn. And she goes, my stomach hurts. My tummy hurts. And she just held up her shirt. I was like, oh, I'm sorry, sweetie. You want me to kiss it? And she's like, No. I was like, oh, okay, well, I can't do anything else. She goes, oil. What? Oil. You want oil? She goes, yeah, mama rubs oil. I was like, oh, crap, okay. Well, I don't know which one I'm supposed to use, so I just used, like, some, like, would you <laughs> patchouli or something. And just like, thank you, and she's all fine. Yeah. <laughs>